This looks like it should be a diggable location, but it is not. It is solely for Halson's ritual. How convenient. You're here. Good. Now we can begin. You can begin. I already did my part. You did, and most splendidly. But if we are to restore the land, there is more to be done. Thaniel is trapped in the Shadowfell, but thanks to your efforts, I know where to look. Now I must go there, alone. What am I to do? With the Oak Father's blessing, I can infiltrate the Shadowfell, but doing so will sap my strength. I'll need your help if I'm to return. I need you to stay here, keep the portal open until I return, and defend it at all costs. Defend it? What do you mean? The shadows won't be banished without a fight. Once I open the portal, they'll swarm like carrion birds and try to destroy it. You must not let that happen. Let's begin. Whatever happens, do not attempt to enter the portal, and do not let anything interfere with it. It took me years of study, of seeking the Oak Father's favor, to find a way to part the veil. Pray that this works. Oak Father, hear me, aid me, force open the jaws of darkness, Make passage for your vessel of light. It's ready. I'll return with Thaniel as soon as possible. Stay close to the portal. Buy me what time you can. And people say at all costs a lot in their video game character writing. I don't think the writers actually know what at all costs mean. What if the, the cost was the destruction of the last light to keep the shadows from uh, destroying the portal? Mass Effect was very guilty of that. It's just they just kept saying at all costs, at all costs, at every turn. All right, so let's move Will closer to this side. Is it just the one shadow right now? I don't think the illusion will do anything right now. We could try magic missile. We could hit these guys. Let's do that. So a couple of these zombies just have two hit points. Is that everybody? And we'll throw one at him. That was a quad kill for Gale right there. reach anybody from here. On the way. Maybe fog. Nah, that's probably gonna hurt me more than help. Silence? I don't think they're really casting any spells. I guess we could true, true strike. Her back. Pretty sure you can't reach anybody. Yeah, we're good. Oh, we can have her dip. Moving. We can do the same with Asterion. Any spells to cast for you? We could cast a glyph, but then it will just trigger on the first person that reaches it, so we'll wait on that. We can cast Blade Ward on herself, which shouldn't be necessary. So yeah, we'll just also dip with her. Yeah, some sh just a bunch of shadows will appear from behind, which is why Will is back there with the Light of Lathander. Because she's a thief, she gets an extra bonus action. 
that we can throw with an enraged throw. He's extingu extinguishing my light sources, which will make it more difficult to fight other shadows on that side, but that's fine. I'm not too worried about it, because every one of my characters is carrying at least a light source. Look at the look at the combat bar there. We're going to cast Hunger of Hadar. This will do a great number on the enemy. Now, my, I don't think I'm equipped with a ring yet that gives me... I must have put it in storage, or I found that in my rehearsal and haven't yet gotten to that point. But there's a ring that, when I do cold damage, makes an ice floor. We need to relight this. It's extinguished already. There's blood in the air. Lazel. Victory awaits. This guy's in the way. Can you kill him? Okay. Now let's light this again. Time oh, it's already lit. Luck again. Go ahead and hit a fire. And I hit all four birds. Doesn't look like it. So we'll hit these three. Trying to, anyways. Ah! Will's collateral damage. I cannot move yet. I think I can reach anyone else, can I? I guess we'll just hit one of these birds, but it shouldn't matter because I'm fairly positive the hunger of Hader will eradicate them. The Shadow Mastiffs are sneaking up on me because I destroyed the torch that was out here. That's cool. I didn't see that during my rehearsal. The blade will not bend. Ha! 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 
You always miss that second hit. Anything else I can cast? Nothing that's really an area effect that I want to worry about right now. Um, let's go ahead and just... Pop the two nearest ones. Stay toasty. Probably need to kill these. Alright, Gail. It's a target rich environment. Have at it. Let's go with this side. Shadow Heart. These guys are not wet. Even though they swam through the water, they do not count as wet. Then you to knock them backwards. Victory awaits. Can't see that mastiff. Switch to blade. I might be able to break that at the same time, but I doubt it. That's path is interrupted, didn't even work. Maybe pick one with a lot of health. These two have quite a bit. Her throw does significant damage. Okay, we did manage to knock or break that barrel as well. Close ranks. Found that other master, and he's gone. Porto itself has 71 hit points. Now it is down to 56. And this is not even the last of them. I can sense how we we'll just have to buy him a little more time. Well, I know there's a Mastiff somewhere in there that I can't find. Yeah, that's a bonus action, so we'll do dash. Just have you hop. Okay, the AI will figure out what the max distance is for running. And then there's the Mastiff. Just stay on top of him until that Mastiff is gone. Let's have some cut.
go for the throat. Might be water down there. No, I was wondering if the hunger of Hadar created any frost. That one looks like he's got a crossbow. Target four of them, but I might be able to get three. Right, enrage throw. They're dead meat. <laughs> Normal throw. Rage throw. Missed one, of course. Look, apparently path interrupted. Fine. Handy. He takes a shot at the portal, which is fine. Tran, killing shot. It's done. I have him. <sighs> but something's wrong. Dreadfully wrong. No. It can't be. Words, man. Use them. The Shadow Curse is as strong as ever. Your plan has failed. No. Everything went exactly as it was supposed to. But there's something... something else. Something missing from Daniel. I need to examine him back at the camp. Come see us when you can. Alright. Looks like my family's home, so we're going to interrupt here, but we'll finish up lifting the Shadow Curse quest, and then we'll call it an episode. Okay, let's chat the Shadow Vestiges, since each one is a unique experience. A faded memory of a boy and girl sharing their first kiss. Your own heart almost flutters in tune with theirs. Yeah, that, I would say, is typically a taboo of uh, writers, is you generally aren't supposed to tell a player how their character feels. If you imagine what our half-orc has been up to thus far, I'm not sure a fluttering <laughs> Heart a fluttering from seeing a boy and girl kiss is in our, our character's nature, but okay. You can almost feel the heat from the forge. This one was once a blacksmith. You glimpse a young harper on the eve of battle against Thorn long ago. He and his comrades toast each other in last light. Thoughts of baby names. She did not wish for her firstborn to be named after her mother-in-law. Muldred. Ugh. Desperate prayers to Saluna echoing from the past. They did not save him. You sense a fading echo of the person who once was, a dock hand. He did not ask for this. Useless statement. I don't think any of these people asked for this. These two pilgrims have a note. One, I can't click on him. I have to actually stand on his body and click on him. I think the game has a little bit of problem with this terrain. There we go. If I was to stand over here and try to click on it, it would say no. This one is a... I'm assuming this is not a later quest or anything, but the note itself is asking for a Shadow Mastiff. I'll let you read it if you wish to pause. And then here's another corpse, which is on the hill. And I have to manually step on in order... Oh, not that one. The top right one? Yes. 
I don't know what this one's about, but it sounds like a limerick that was meant to say that there was a foolish girl who wanted to be shadow cursed and then gave gave up or changed her mind. I'll let you pause if you want to read that one. And that's all the notable loot on these corpses. Since my family had come home and I saved the game, I took that as an opportunity to check out all the corpses, so as not to take away from the published video time. Victims of the Shadow Curse. At least they were afforded a burial. So going up here, you can find the the graveyard of Last Light Inn, and there's really only one thing we care about. Up here, there is a pile of rubble with a magic shield under it. Something over there. Someone caved this flaming fist's face in. Grim. Thankfully, Asterion was able to pass this perception check because no one else did. You can find inside the Shield of Scorching Reprisal. When a foe hits you with a melee attack, you can use your reaction to not get prone. Okay, that's the normal one. And then Blazing Retaliation. Huddle behind your shield to increase your armor class by one and reap Scorching Retaliation upon attackers who miss you. When they miss you with a melee attack, they take one to six fire damage. So this actually might go well with Shadowheart's defensive build. That being said though, since the game does not let me dual wield shields, I, I wish they would. Uh, yeah, it's not gonna let me dual wield shields. I can't utilize both the adamantine shield, which gives me reeling on an enemy and lack of critical hits. We'll hold off on it for now, but we would have to pick one or the other. On my way. Violence solves all problems, and that includes for things such as lockpicking or disarming traps. In fact, most of the doors I've encountered are wooden doors, and they are weak to force damage, which an Eldritch Blast is. This is back to town. Let's go ahead and return to our camp, talk to Halson. Thaniel is resting, but it's no easy slumber. I discovered what's wrong with him. The shadows rendered him in two when they bore him away to the Shadowfell. Half of his essence remained here, amidst the curse. What stayed behind would have been the strongest part of him. But after all these years left in the darkness, corruption must have taken hold. How do you know this? I knew something was wrong when he didn't wake up. But now I'm even more certain. By now, we should have seen some small glimmer of Thaniel's power. A sign that the land is healing. New growth, flowers in bloom. But there has been nothing. Can it be undone? Perhaps. If we can find Thaniel's lost half and make him whole again. Only the missing half may not come willingly. The curse will have sunk its tendrils deep. Twisting Thaniel's essence into something else. You're sending me to look for a needle in the haystack, in the dark. No matter how it's been twisted by the shadows, it is still part of Thaniel's essence. It will resemble him somehow and may show signs of his power. Look for signs of life in the darkness, wildflowers where everything else is dead. The curse cannot subdue the power Thaniel bears. Not entirely. In fact, I saw just the sort before, not long after we first came within reach of the Shadow Curse. Fool that I am, I did not grasp their significance at the time. There is a ruin some way outside of Last Light. I caught a glimpse of fresh blooms there, but did not investigate further. I shall mark it upon your map. I'll see what I can do, but no promises. Let me help you then. Every moment counts, and I've asked much of you already without being at your side. If you want me, I'm yours. Against the curse, against the absolute... Anything. Just say the word. I met a sort of shadow child before. A little boy named Oliver. Around Daniel's age. And you saw this boy yourself? That can't be a coincidence. But we need to be sure. Join me. Good. Now our roots can deepen. Together. Keep your roots away from me. Go ahead and head to the Shadow Battlefield. 
Once, you could hear nature's symphony in this place. Now, it is quiet. Quiet and dead. I can make some animal noises, if it will make you feel more at home. You bleat well enough as it is. I think that's an insult. We are all still moon shielded, that's good. He is currently level one and we'll level up Halston after this, but let's go ahead and deal with Oliver first. Not back to glow, are you? Nobody likes a bad winner. Though shrouded in shadows, the child's resemblance to Thaniel is unmistakable. This must be his dark half, warped by the curse. I still think you might have tricked me. If you did, I'll figure it out. I know who you really are. And where you really belong. You need to reunite with Daniel. Spoil sport. I'm not going back. I like it here. I've made a family for myself. I get to play all the time. Don't make this harder than it needs to be. Not harder. Impossible. I don't want to play with you anymore. Ugh. He's scarpered. We'd better track him down if the shadows don't stop us first. Foiled by a little kid. That's our party. How feeble. How pathetic. All right, before we step through this portal. The blessing of Saloon, if we get that on our characters, we would have take less damage from necrotic sources. So that would actually be valuable. Let me go ahead and level up Halson. All right, we leveled him up as just a typical circle of the moon because that's his default status. I have no idea what I'm doing with Druid, so we'll mess with that in a bit. Let's go ahead and attack this next boss battle, and I'm going to try a bunch of things. I don't think they'll work, but I want to see how open-ended this game actually is. The reason why we wanted to kill these guys before this part of the quest is they would have despawned otherwise, and it's nice that they don't make the player have to fight them in addition to this boss battle. Though, I think that they could have just as easily applied the same feature. The feature I'm talking about is when you defeat these shadows, the shield around the kid takes damage, and that's the way to win this battle. I'm not sure what all will work. I'm gonna try a bunch of things. Let's try cast, uh, we'll cast, let's see, upcast, uh, that's, that's not, upcast sleep storm doesn't have any additional benefits. All right, fine. Let's just go ahead and we'll sleep storm this one because she has, this will be a free concentration for her in that oh, I've applied a lot of druid spells. I just want to see, does Halson have anything that makes this um, boss battle more interesting? So I don't, sleep, sleep, sleep storm is not to do any damage. It's supposed to break concentration. So I was wondering, would that break this night dome? The Night Dome itself is, it won't allow me to access the kid and any damage we do to it will be reflected twice as much to us. I was wondering, okay, would Sleet Storm disable his dome? It does not. And the ghost will move before Will, so it doesn't really matter too much where we stand then. I'll make my own fun if I have to. And my own friends. Now I don't actually know what happens to the kid uh, what what the kids will do. I assume since they're facing him that if they reach him they heal his his night dome. Can I fear the kid? Again, I'm not expecting any of these to actually work. Uh, it doesn't have a little reticle or crosshairs on top of the unit, so I don't think it necessarily will, will do anything. Okay. Anything else? What if I cast fairy fire? Okay. Nothing specifically happens there. We 
to Bardic. I want to be Bardic Hasa. Welcome to the team. Okay, well, Sleet Storm wasn't doing anything for me, so I'm not worried about it. It says extinguish, but they are still totally lit by fairy fire. All right, this is Halston's turn. I just want to see, are we able to do anything with his spells? We've got Polymorph. Can I Polymorph the Night Dome? No, not in that. I didn't think so. Could I hold person him? Where is the kid on this graph? Does the kid not exist? Oh, there he is. I could try 65%. What happens if I hold person him? That's an interesting idea. Time to push my luck again. Probably nothing, really. Let's try hold person again. Too bad I can't target him twice with the same spell. Immune to hold person. <laughs> Why do you tell me 70% chance? All right. I guess if I... Sunlight weakness. While in sunlight, this creature has disadvantage on attack rolls, saving throws, blah, blah. Nothing that actually says that he's immune to hold person, which is fine. I'm not worried about it. Fuck yes. Why don't we also, while we're at it, on the victor's path, ask me the book. I'm just testing a bunch of things. I can easily do damage to it. I just want to see how much. But that who passed at the wrong person. I just want to see how much the game allows you to do things that aren't smash stuff. Let's go ahead and cast haste on Halson because we gave Halson a bunch of spells for this. So polymorph didn't, polymorph didn't work. Polar person didn't work. Sleet storm didn't work. We packed moonbeam and spike growth as well as daylight. I'll try moonbeam next. This will probably just do straight up damage. We didn't do any damage at the time. We'll just keep him in the back. Oh, and notice that he still got his torch. This area would be the darker region, but since we progressed on this quest line, torches can exist. So if we were to find braziers in the area or lanterns that we can light, I'm trying to look for a brazier in the streets, then it can continue to provide us some light source. You no longer need the moon shield at this point. It's helpful though. All right, I'm curious to see what happens when the kids reach the boss. They're trying to introduce a boss mechanic here, but is it really nothing more than fireball them till you win? Uh, that's why I'm doing all this other stuff. So for example, let's try silencing the boss and will that prevent him from casting more things? I assumed that the kids would run up to him and heal the shield, but apparently they just attacked me. That's weak. Ready. Of course, she already spent her spell, otherwise I would cast the Spirit Guardians. Are these things... These are not undead, I don't think. Maybe the kid is? Yeah, the kid is. Is this? Oh, yeah, they are undead. Alright. What happens if I turn the kid? You can't turn undead without a verbal... Opponent. I didn't know that. I just assumed that it's holding up your holy symbol. Alright, well let's turn undead for now, and then we'll walk over here and turn undead again. He can still cast Fluffy Memory, which summons a giant bear.
Oh, they're immune to thunder damage because of the silence. I forgot about that. Silence is not a spell I throw in battle a lot. Target cannot be an inanimate entity. Can't brand him. I, I'm a little sad that nothing has so, I've done so far has worked. It's at this point I would have to wonder, should I just re-record this fight and say like, hey, nothing works. Or leave this in and go with the, the first attempt. It's not that the boss is hard or anything. I just wanted to explore what possible mechanics might exist. have any other elements, so I guess we will Scorching Ray this. Shadowheart just taking out people one at a time with your shield. Yeah, we've still got silence running and that hasn't helped. So we can just dispel that, I suppose. What else can we do? I guess we'll just do damage. I, I, I mean... Asterion is no slouch in a damage department. I just hope for more. Can I turn the kid? It does not look like it. We can cast Shield of Faith on her to increase her armor class and give her a concentration ability. See that his shield has taken a ton of damage. Moonbeam hasn't really done anything. I'm assuming his moonbeam is still running, right? Yeah, that hasn't done anything. So we'll try Lathander's sunbeam at this time. Straight shot. This guy is currently turned, so he's not going to do any... Does this attack hurt my characters? It looks like it does. So I want to line up in a way that doesn't. would like to hit at least three people with the area effect. Yeah. He took the damage, and I know that can happen. I'm not worried about the damage. I was just hoping to find some sort of pivotal, like, hey, this spell makes the battle awesome. We should revive you. What we could do is transfuse health. That's our bonus action. Then we can do an action on these two rats. Gale, um, you're probably going to fall over on this one, so let's stand you right next to him in case you die. We'll cast Magic Missile. One for each of the kids, and then the rest on the Night Dome. Is the Night Dome not up here? I guess not. I don't see it. We've tried Moonbeam that did absolutely nothing. This was just to deal with the kids, because I thought they would run in and heal him, but they don't even do that much. We haven't tried daylighting him yet. 
We can enchant an item. Nope. I mean, come on. This is the game's chance to really do something cool. I just wish that for a druidic quest, that his druidic spells had more potential there. Violence does solve everything. Staren, yeah, you, you have enough hit points to take the damage, I guess. Why couldn't you just leave me alone? Why can't I just stay here, playing? I had everything I've ever wanted, right here! And you've ruined it! I'm not leaving. You can't make me. Be gentle. He's much more than a child. But he doesn't truly know that. I, I, again, Gale is our current character because he so, was so close to the kid at the time. But we'll make it as if the, uh, the orc was doing the talking. Let's see here. We have choices of lengthening your strength, thieving shadow. I don't think any of these choices matter, really. It's just what you might consider role-playing choices. People are dying for the sake of your fun, kid. I said gentle. I told you already. Nobody dies here. They come back over and over, a little different each time. But I don't change. Not really. So maybe I won't come back. Maybe the game will end with me. Maybe that's for the best. I'm tired. Nobody really wants to play with me. They only want Thaniel. They can have him. It's done. More cruelly than it needed to be, but done all the same. We should return to Thaniel when we can. Elson, get off your high horse. That's actually one of the reasons I don't like Will that much. Look, look around you. Look at all the people that have died because of this shadow curse. <laughs> Loaded an earlier save and refought Oliver. We're going to head into Moonrise Towers. If we leave a character near Counselor Floric, she will not despawn. Similar to all of the conversation and lecturing that I did on the Joaquin's Rest episode. And we actually get a rare dialogue doing this. It's not super significant, but I'm trying to find out all the juicy tidbits. Moonrise Towers lies ahead. We're close. I can feel it. The Absolute. Its power is strong here. Time's over, pet. Ah, oh, I love this time of year. The dickheads start popping up wherever you look. What do you want, Mizora? Drop the attitude and perk up your ears. You've got a new mission. Absolute's cult has gone and grabbed one of Zariel's assets. A devil. And a powerful one at that. They're locked up in the cult's fortress, Moonrise Towers, and you're getting them out. If you've been escorted by the Drider this far, they pay absolutely no notice to the Mazora appearing in front of you. If this devil is so powerful, how do they manage to get captured? Will your playmate's wasting precious time? Let's see about getting his priorities fixed. <clears throat> Clause Z, Section 13. Should promised soul refuse obeyance or neglect duty, the pact holder shall cast the promised into a vernus as a lemur. I'll make it simple. Will fails or refuses, and he turns to a thick blob of stink flesh and sinks to a vernus. Now, be a good boy and play fetch, pup, or you'll spend an eternity sizzling in the hells. Mazora's words may be flippant, but they are tinged with desperation. She cannot afford for Will to fail this mission. This may be your best chance to negotiate Will out of his pact. Alright. Will, you give me so much crap when we talk about devils and doing things that might be morally ambiguous or whatnot, but should the promise soul refuse doing whatever it is she says, you become a lemur, whatever that is, a thick blob of stink flesh. You signed a pact like that. 
Whatever, Will. This is why I cannot take you seriously. We'll rescue your asset on one condition. Oh, and what condition is that? Your mind links with Will's, drawn in by his increasing panic. What are you doing? Respond to Will in your mind. Shut up. This doesn't concern you. Will relaxes, and your connection fades. Mizora will rescue this asset if you release Will from his pact. Interesting. Now, why should I go letting my favorite pet off his leash? We could always let the cult infect the asset. I bet they'd make a loyal throng. Incredible. You actually think you hold the winning hand. Fine. I'll play your game. But I amend the pact once the mission's done, not before. Clause F, Section 9. Soulbinder shall bestow reward or favor only upon soul bearers' fulfillment of related obligation. You've heard of this provision. Better known as the You First Clause. Now, to Moonrise, pet. And do you mind the shadows? They've been especially hungry. If we move too far, we'll lose the Carlax dialogue, but not Will's. We'll go ahead and do this now. God damn it! Why did it have to be Mizora? Why did it have to be Zariel? We're supposed to risk our necks to get one of her assets. What if it's a runaway like me? Or something far worse? You heard, Mizora. This is supposedly the last thing Will has to do for her. Then he's free. I want to believe that as much as you do. Almost as much as Will does. But I just know there will be more to the story. There always is. It's a bad idea to play games with the devil. You'd never win. Not ever. The more bullshit she pours, the more of it I'm forced to swallow. Mazora set me on fiends inside and outside the hells. She's never ordered a rescue. Gods. She makes a mockery of everything the blade stands for. Such an asshole. Whatever happened to never regretting it, not for one second. Forget it. She'll be gone soon enough. Do this mission, and Mizora might free you from this pack. Thank you for sticking your neck out for me. I mean it, but I'm not going to celebrate till I'm actually free. Can already feel her scheming. She won't let me go without a fuss. Trust me on this. It's not like you have a choice. Do the mission or rot in the hells. What a stupid contract. Not just rot. I'd have to fight. One of those mindless blobs clawing at demons on the front lines of the blood war. A warrior? Hardly. A single lemur is worth less than a maggot. Only in swarms are they ever useful. My, my. She really has you by the unmentionables, doesn't she? Were I a less considerate man, this is where I'd remind you of the importance of reading the fine print. But fear not. I shall bite my tongue. No, Will. Not you. I won't let that happen. Not ever. You are everything you accused the Karlak of being. I am not sorry for you. And you shouldn't be. I always knew what my future held. And I know I chose right. <clears throat> Still incapable of self-introspection, Will. need to find a way forward. That's far enough. His thoughts invade your own, probing for purchase. Your parasite purrs in recognition. Ah, one blessed like myself. What news, true soul? I might ask the same. Why is one of our rank on guard duty? Who better to suss out his like? You'll find Zarel in the audience chamber, true soul. 
She'll be wanting to hear from you. That's what I call an invitation. Let's find Zarel and get this caravan moving. In her name. Praise the Absolute. to diminish our efforts, but it was rather simple getting here in the end, wasn't it? The obstacles ahead of us promise to be high. There can be no doubt. This is the place. This is where we'll discover the secret of the Absolute. So this is the abode of our dear Absolute. It's about as cheerful as expected. We're in the belly of the beast now. Try not to do anything too heroic. The seat of the Absolute, and the source of our altered tadpoles. Stay your blade when you're able. Interrogate who you can. Answers first, bloodshed later. We needed to get back to camp, right? The druid Halsin spoke to me while I was sleeping. He spoke of you. Said that you fought shadow and spite to restore me. A hundred years of sickness almost ended. I feel every root that riddles the earth beginning to unfold. But there is one anchor, still holding the shadows in place. The soul that brought it into being, for the land to heal. Ketherick Thorn must die. Yeah. Uh, what would I expect from Jurids? <laughs> to heal the land, go kill someone else. Catherick's soul still nourishes the shadows. Destroy him. So the land may heal. So that I may heal. Now, while he is not the source of the Shadow Curse, he can rebuff it or allow the land to heal. That's why, that's why the Shadow Curse is weaker now that we've done this. The Shadow Curse comes from Shar, so that'd be on the Shadow Hearts side or faction of things. That's for why I don't like Will. It's because every time you talk about devils, he's like, oh, that's a bad idea. I was like, dude, Will, you're harping on about how your idea was great. You don't regret it. I'm ranting. All right. You, you don't want to you don't want to hear that. Oak Father preserve you. So we have a bunch of new dialogues. Let me think here. We'll save this for now, because this is not necessarily quest-related. This is more house and related so we'll hold off on that. Go and return to the Last Light Inn. Last Light Inn. Hearth aglow and lanterns lit, just like a hundred years ago. Jihira wants to know about I imagine the vista was more idyllic back then. As were his patrons' chances of surviving the walk home. Now we can light torches and stuff in the Shadow Cursed Realm and we'll be okay. We have still not currently talked to Jahira. Or any of the tieflings. Other than Mole and Mattis. This is him. Halsin, right? The one Art's been asking for. Any word on Thaniel? Is he alright? Is he safe? Yes, now promise to stop talking about him. He is? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. If you'd seen the Shadowfell, seen what hides in that darkness, You'd have been worried, too. I can finally rest now. It's been too long. <sighs> Erna updated. Lift the Shadow Curse. I'm assuming it's going to tell me to kill Ketrick Thorm or whatever. Returning Oliver and Daniel is not enough. Ketrick Thorm is the anchor of the curse. For the land to heal, he must be defeated. All roads lead to that. Yeah, I'm not really surprised. It is kind of a railroaded situation here. Thank you again. But I need to rest. The curse has left me weak. 
Now we will finally talk to these characters. We'll start with Fist right here. Hmm. You're heading into the towers, are you? Good. I pray it's not too late for Duke Ravengard. Then we'll do Fist Aubrey. An extra blade could be the difference between rescuing Duke Ravengard or losing him forever. I hope you'll help us. Then Fist Thadwick. We're discussing fist business, and you're no fist. Thanks, Thadwick. No, I'm not really worried about what all the Looks fists have like to say. There's a bunch of them patrolling around. Right I wanted to talk to people who are currently conversing with Counselor Floric. Before we talk to Counselor Floric, let's talk to one more fist soldier with opinions about Floric. Hey, that's close enough. You ain't no Harper and you ain't no fist. Don't need the likes of you crashing our party. Give it a rest, Alfred. We need all the God's damned help we can get. I expected a bit more decorum from my flaming fist soldier. Want me to shine your boots while I'm at it? Easy. He's a bit on edge since the, uh, incident. A bit on edge, my ass. Not that you'll give a triple shat damn, but we were ambushed by them bloody cultists. Bastards torched the pigsty we were staying in and made off with the Grand Duke of Baldur's Gate himself. The Absolute's taken him then. No question about it. So what are you standing around here for? Because my bath hasn't run yet. Why do you think? We're waiting for orders. Jahira's and the Counselors. Floric is Ravengard's political advisor. And Sora's a snakebite about losing him too. Floric's here. Where can I find her? She's inside. One of the ground floor chambers. Guess you need to be a god's damned counselor to get room and board around here. Alright, now we've talked to all of the relevant NPCs. We'll chat with Floric. Like right Once you've spoken with Floric, the next time you arrive in the area, she and some of her entourage will be gone, but some of the fists will remain behind. He still won't speak. Just keeps going with the bloody song. Nothing of use on his person. His original writ of duty. Signed by Eltan himself. Fella must be one of the very first flaming fist. He must know something. Let's not give up on him yet. Floric. Hells. I know that voice. Will. In Timora's name, what happened to you? The Hells have had their vengeance, and I doubt they are done with me. Ye gods. Fate has no shortage of troubles to burden us with. I don't suppose you found a way into the towers? I have, but there is no sign of the Duke. It's impressive that you've reached Moonrise at all. Even more impressive that you're alive to tell the tale. But it's not the tale I wanted to hear. Keep on searching. I'll be heading to Baldur's Gate to seek reinforcements. The Council sent a carrier pigeon with news that the city has been dealing with absolutist attacks. The Steel Watch is holding strong. I'll request that Lord Gortash send some of them to aid in the fight against Moonrise. The curse won't harm them. Holy shit. That's my old boss. The guy who sold me to Zariel. Gortash, as in... Enver Gortash. Last I knew, he was a minor player in city affairs. A lot's changed since you left Baldur's Gate, Will. Gortash has gained considerable influence since then. How do you expect to reach Baldur's Gate? I half expect to die trying, but I prefer that to standing on the sidelines while you risk everything. My role here is limited. I can be put to better use convincing the Council to send reinforcements to help rescue the Duke. With the Steel Watch at our backs, we can storm the tower whatever Kethrick throws at us, I'm sure of it. I'll do my best, but there's every chance I'll fall to the curse of all the cult before I reach the city. Don't count on me and assume no aid is coming. 
Work with Jahira. That harper's mind is as sharp as her blade. Follow her guidance. Farewell. We'll meet again, God's willing. Warwick seems like a nice person. The only person I didn't chat with was this guy right here a minute, Vidor, because talking to her or Councillor Florek starts the same dialogue. Sir Gortash is a lord now. I'd like to clap eyes on this steel watch of his. You already know the story. I was Gortash's bodyguard, loyal as they come, when he made the deal with Zariel. She got a test subject for her infernal engine. I never found out what he got. This is the kind of man who gets a title. Authority makes me sick. If he got the steel watch from your infernal engine, whatever it is, it must be quite impressive. You know what? It probably is. Man has a talent for nuts and bolts. Weapons, too. Hopefully, whatever he's made really is helping defend the city. I'm sure there's a catch, but I guess we'll find out when we get to the city. Home. Gods, I can't wait! Even Gortash can't spoil that. Hmm, a savvy move recruiting Alsa into our cause. While I'm adept at most forms of weave manipulation, druidic magic is not my area of expertise. He will make for a most useful option to have in reserve. I think I'll enjoy traveling with Halson. Not for his wit or wisdom. He'll just make an excellent shield if we're attacked. Ah, Halson is such a delight. Woe to the cultist who tangles with that thick hunk of an elf. Lorik's last clue of your father's takes us to Moonrise Towers. Then we know our mission. All roads converge at Moonrise. Can we trust Flora? I was 11 when the Counselor spotted and slayed an assassin who stalked Father from the shadows. I was 13 when she brought word of a goblin warband advancing on Rivington. Her keen scouting saved a hundred lives that day. The Counselor's loyalty to my father is beyond question. She's as steady as Tear's heartbeat, as upstanding as the Sword Mountains. Father's at Moonrise Towers. And we need to save him. The cult must have some reason for taking your father, but what? They want violence, they want control, they want Baldur's Gate. Who better than Grand Duke Ravengard to surrender it? Who better than the commander of the Flaming Fist to dismantle its defenses? I truly hope you're wrong about this. Me too, Shadowheart. Me too. But if I'm right, they will infect him, and the city's guardian will become its ruin. Unless we put a stop to it. To Moonrise, then. We can't let the Absolute take Grand Duke Ravengar. We can't and we won't. Ketherick Thorn be damned. And finally, Minute Vidor has something to say. Oh, it looks like the stump had some life in him yet. Well done. I'm glad you're enjoying spectating. I answer to Floric. And she's told me to stand guard. You've got a long road ahead of you yet. I wish you luck. We've done our best to lift the Shadow Curse. Thank you very much for watching Tran wins Baldur's Gate 3. I'll see you next time.